Greetings Minecrafters and welcome to an exciting Minecraft discussion on don't take anything personally. My name is Dr. Kimberly Quinn and it is my pleasure today to entertain this discussion and also you know my main role of course is to help people learn to become the boss of their brain so because thoughts come first feelings come second and then action or behavior third we know that to be true so by uh, learning to control our thoughts practicing thought control we can literally and do change our lives and relatively quickly so right out of the gate here, even though I'm not taking anything directly from um, from this, I have to tell you I'm a big fan of the of the book The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I've also used it for uh, my Minecraft classes, and uh, since I read it and I like I love it, it's like one of my favorite books. I'm just throwing that a big shout out there to him because I do read so voraciously that these ideas come from all over the place. I just want to cover myself because it certainly didn't all come from me. And, you know, he does say in there somewhere that um, we're talking about taking things personally, right? So we, when we take things personally, this is, is sort of an expression of or self-importance of the highest order. And when we think about that, he's really providing us with some great insight because we're assuming you know, that whatever is being said to us is really and truly about us. And of course, you know, that can be tricky because so somebody can say something unkind that, um, you know, that se is seemingly directed right at us. But, you know, the whole point here is that even when it's something, you know, that seems super personal, you know, they're using our name, they're maybe even pointing at us, which is kind of aggressive. I don't like pointing um, unless it's to, you know, a smart board in a classroom or something, pointing just seems aggressive to me. But people are also like when they're in that mode of, you know, um, you know, aggressing or microaggressing or macroaggressing, it can just seem so personal. And even if it seems like a total, you know, character assault, think about it. Just think about it for a second. That's, you know, 98% at least about that person. And here's why, because, we are all the, you know, the main characters on our own stage. That's just the truth. Even as parents, and it's tough to think of things like that when we've got loving parents, and it's just how cognition works. You know, all external stimuli, all everything coming in through our senses that runs through the thalamus, decides where to go, all of it is coming through our own mind. And our own mind has been shaped from the ground up, from the ground up, from all of it, from the environment we grew up in, whether we had one parent or two, whether we lived in, lived in an urban or rural environment where we were in the birth order, if we had a sibling who had special needs, if we, um, if somebody has a compromised sense, I can think of my brother-in-law, can't see, if he, you know somebody's born without their hearing. Again, if you've got a sibling who was born without one of those, that changed the family dynamics. If you're an only child, that changed the family dynamics. If you experience that, you know, deaths and crisis and, and trauma, young, that had something to, you know, that comes into it. So when we're making what seems like everyday decisions or everyday comments, even within the context of a workplace environment or a school environment, or it's in a relationship and we're having a discussion over, you know, tea at a bistro and it's, it's you know, we're having, you know, some heavy duty talk. There isn't a way to separate all of that that's in the vault. I like to call it the vault or the unconscious. We can also bring in attachment issues, which would include our ability to trust somebody. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. So even if at 35, 45, 55, 65 and up or whatever, we're having a conversation with somebody, they're having a conversation with us and they say something, you know, maybe in a heated way that, you know, seems like a direct hit on us. It's important to remember, not that we're saying it excuses it. No, we're not saying that at all. Realize that it's it's largely coming out of the vault, for sure. And all of these other things, anything that's ever been said to that person, any of their relationships, their own mental health situation, their wiring, whether introverted or extroverted, all their personality stuff, their whole environment from the ground up is all, is all part of that somehow indirectly. If that makes is that making sense to you? And here's the other thing: is that there's a direct connection from taking things personally to assumption making, 
in the reverse. It's kind of like a circle. And so especially um, as one who, uh, with my doctorate in cognitive psychology, I, I hope I'm a little bit, a little bit aware, but I'm not always because I definitely slide into, and it's easy for me when I get emotional to slide into it though. I, I try my best to be aware of, you know, what assumptions are. And then also to not bite the hook with those, cause it's so easy to bite the hook, especially when we're out, when we're out there in the world and there's gossip going on and there's some good juice and somebody heard whatever about whoever by the water cooler and it's based in no fact whatsoever whatsoever or very little fact and remember that who's ever the telling telling the story the narrative because it is a story remember it's coming through their own filter they're telling it to somebody else and it's now going through their filter so i've spent two filters and that's all and that's if it's being discussed you know verbally if we enter you know texting or emailing into it with whatever juice they're talking about and making assumptions. This is just black and white text, right? And we can't, there's no face to read. There's no tone to read. You know, we might see, see an exclamation point and like, ooh, they're pissed at me. You know, my, my students say that a lot. Um, and I, I like to think I'm fairly fluent in young adult, though it does change. You got to keep up with it. So you got to like reboot the new drivers for Rosetta Stone because it does change rather frequently. Because they tell me that the dot, 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 is something the expl- the explanation point is definitely something and then if and then of course they can tell if you read the text so if it's not read that can even be a micro aggress because they see that it's you and they don't want to read it and they interpret that as they don't like me anymore if it's, if it's romantic they want to break up with me you know it can't be that the phone is dead or i'm getting a root canal it has to be they don't like me they want to break up with me or whatever and so there's just there's so much assumption going on when we take things personally as well. And obviously the only way to know what someone else thinks or how they feel is to ask them. That is the only tried and true way to know. And this also kind of banks on the fact that they're being honest because other stuff plays into that. Okay. So if they are being honest, that is the only way to know how someone thinks or feels. You know, in the last couple of YouTubes I did, which are also on you on on um, the podcast, these podcasts are also on YouTube. We've also been talking about this, which kind of rolls in with, you know, ceasing to attach or detaching from other people's drama. And this is also related to taking things personally, because it can be, be so incredibly tempting to get roped into that. And, you know, that's the common enemy dynamic in psychology. And of course, as seasoned grown-ups, we don't like to think we can be capable of that, right? You know, but we do. We hear some good juice going on, like, did you hear so-and-so, you know, broke up with so-and-so, and guess what? I heard they skipped away to for the weekend to Lake George. Did you hear? You know, and, you know, part of you wants to say, who cares? I'm a grown-up, and the other part's like, really? Tell me more, you know? And then when other people also in, in, our, in a friends group, you know, get us roped into their own drama, there can be this kind of natural inclusive dope fix that we feel from it and you know typically it just doesn't go anywhere good you know and it it can really be restricting for me it feels suffocating actually I'm just anybody who knows me well knows I just repel drama I absolutely just oh I can't stand it I feel like I can't even breathe Um, but it's coming from this place you know of of self-importance and just getting roped into that whole big tangled web you know, and then part of that is, of course, there's a couple of big dope fixes here. Um, what you know, what one is definitely the need to judge. I mean, we we all know how it feels to be judged. It feels, you know, horrible usually. Yet we still do it to other people, and often we're aware of it. And sometimes it's just so freaking tempting, especially if the if the person, in our opinion isn't that good of a person. It just seems like it's, it's like it's easier. And there is this common enemy thing that we, that's, we can bite the hook with. And it's not different than, you know, this, the common enemy thing in like, you know, third grade, a new kid moves in and they're looking for somewhere to sit. And there's a couple of kids are like, I saw her, I saw her in the hallway and she picks her nose and eats it. Don't sit by her. And then all of a sudden the other kids are like, okay, Oh, don't do that. And cause it's because it's, it's like an inclusivity mob mentality sort of thing, sort of kind of that, you know, we, we feel like we're, we're all banding up together and we feel included. And there's a dope fix in that, even though it's obviously not kind based on 
no fact or the fact of one kid that thinks they saw what they saw, if it's even true. She could have been bending over at the at the drinking fountain and had an itch. Like, who knows, right? And then the, the seasoned grown-up version of that, um, we might not say something about picking our nose, but we see all kinds of things. We know we do. And that's how, you know, clicks in grown-up world happen. And, uh, you know, that, so that, that judging thing, I don't know if it, like a couple of days goes by or where, where I, you know, we don't hear it somehow. Somebody judging, right? And that's a total dope fix. The other big one, and that's because, again, that, inclus- that inclusivity thing. It also leads to dope fix number two, which is it can be, it's one of, one of the most guilty pleasures as far as this goes, is our need to be right. It's just so hard to pull away from that. And especially when we, like, legitimately are right. Like, maybe it's something you could even look up and prove to somebody. Let's say it's something scientifically based or something that's, you know, you can just look it up or historically based or whatever. And we're just so, we have such a huge need to be like, see, 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 I'm right. I'm right. Elevate myself, elevate myself, elevate myself, which is obviously the ego but in both of these circumstances because the ego has, has a need to get this to get this fixed, to elevate itself at the expense of somebody else. We have this quick payoff because we don't do anything without payoff. And typically, if we're good people, which most of us are very good people, there, there's a fix in that in the short term. And after that, we usually feel like crap. Because it's not nice to do, even if we really are right and we can prove it, especially proving it in front of other people is even more unkind where if we could, you know, um, you know, kind of move the authentic self into the driver's seat or in the front and center of our mind, at least. Right. Move the, the authentic self right up there. And even though knowing we're right, you know, about something that's, again, completely provable, maybe. And just let the other person have the glory. Who cares? Who really cares? And sit there. If it's something that's your expertise even, you might bite your lip till it bleeds. But if you can do that and still let the other person be right, even if they're wrong, right, or or not disprove them or hold back, oh, my gosh, it's just so much better. And it goes right into the authenticity, you know, um, bank, like a deposit. Like, look, I, I resisted that temptation, took the high road, you know, yay. And, you know, for me, you know, being most definitely every day of my life on a path to authenticity and the farther along I get on that path, and obviously there's hiccups and speed bumps because we're all, we are all a work in progress. We are all growing, Um, you know, because as weird as it sounds, maybe I actually enjoy when I'm challenged to grow and be in a growth spurt. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's easy. I've had a couple of circumstances recently actually which weren't easy i mean they were on the scale of hard they weren't like super hard either but they weren't easy kind of nudged me a little bit and still i thought okay you know and i say to god or the universe whoever that is for you higher power source for me it's god but just make that work for you okay you know help me figure this out because i feel right now i'm very uncomfortable with whatever the conversation was very uncomfortable might have you know stirred something up from um you know previous wound or something like that not like in a gigantic gaping kind of hemorrhage way just in a ooh, okay that touched something you know i tapped that bounced on one of my buttons or something like okay show me the way because i feel like i'm the edge i'm on the edge of growth and becoming even more enlightened and also and stronger with who i am it helped to kind of help me figure this out and then wow when i come out on the other side of that oh my god it's so amazing talk about um like uh like a you know, it's like making a deposit in the self-esteem bank is what I tell my students with, with taking the high road in general. And if an, and if it's an authenticity thing, it's it's amped up even more than than self-esteem. It's related definitely because self-esteem is of course our belief in ourselves, but it also rolls in self-image, which is how we view ourselves, and it and it's just our authentic core. And when we when I feel like I've advanced, even if it's like a few millimeters, oh, it's such a rush, and it's 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 an authentic rush. It's not like an addicted fix. It's, it's lasting. It's such, it's, it's long lasting really forever because it's, it's kind of like just, it's just going forward or, or I don't know. It's just, it's authentic and it just stays. It, it lasts forever. And it's, it's just so good. And then of course, in an, in an empathetic sense, when somebody does these digs, and again, I've had a, a few lately and from good people actually, um, to, to tr- I try to, 
have empathy, which doesn't always work if it's something mean. And nothing was said to me was like, like that. Just, just, well, just a little growth spurty, you know. But when something is, especially if, if it's mean, which I haven't had that happen in a while, um, and it's not fun, it definitely doesn't give it a pass. It might need to have something said back to it because it doesn't mean that just because, you know, we are taking the high road and, and, and kind of embracing something on, in our own way as a growth spurt does not mean that it's, that it's acceptable to do or that it doesn't, again, that it doesn't need some rebuttal, doesn't need, somebody doesn't need to be, doesn't, doesn't need to be, you know, sort of take accountability for whatever it is, whether they do or not, but we can at least say it and then we feel better. Though in my head, but even when I'm saying whatever I'm saying, and I do hear um, my, my good friend, Father Mike, kind of speaking to me without any exaggeration. Oh, what a great man he was. He would say, you got to say, like T would say to me, you got to say how you feel. Well, we will implode if we don't say how we feel. Like it's, it's just so important to, to self-express, right? And he would say, that will definitely hit the pause button. It's not usually to say it right in that moment if the emotions are, you know, raw. But he would say, whatever you're going to say, say it with honesty and kindness. And so when I can say however I feel with honesty and kindness, regardless of what it is, I'm feeling pretty good at myself, about myself. You know, I'm feeling pretty good with honesty and kindness. And then I slide into the place of, um, I can only be responsible for what I say. And not what the other person hears, which very much helps me then to, you know, detach, you know, if there's an injured reaction to what I say, because if I was honest and kind, I don't own that. I said what I said with honesty and kindness, and they might re- you know, be reacting out of an injured place. And we go back right back to the beginning of this episode, which is not to take things personally. Their injury isn't my fault or problem. And I also, then I also remind myself that when people are walking around feeling whole and complete and authentic, they don't generally attack other people or feel the meet the need to whatever the scale of that attack is. It might be a full assault, but it might be just like a, like a micro assault, right? They're still, that's come from a broken place or an injured place, which is not my fault or problem. However, I do sometimes send the good vibes their way, um, especially if they're close to me and just came from a hurt place, tired place, injured place, whatever. And I put some good energy, send some good energy out to them. And that also, I find that helpful as well. And I think that's a great place to end. So this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.